guys, Dr. Pam, Academic Coaching for World Changers. And thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning into our YouTube channel today. And thank you for spending some time with us. I am very aware there are lots of other tutors out there. There are lots of other people that you can choose. And you chose to hang out with me today. And I definitely appreciate it. I will tell you that one of the things that makes us unique, we are a specialty tutoring company. Um, no one else uh, that I'm aware of only focuses on mental health exams. What that means is when I'm tutoring you, I can teach you, and my staff and I can teach you some information. I'm going to share questions with you that may be on the social work exam, that may be on the LFT exam, but those questions and the content are still the same. So many of you spend so many times focusing on the questions, and you know, I don't think that's the best way to study. The best way to study is really to learn the content. However, when you're tutoring with us, I can give you questions that maybe if you're a social worker, you've never seen before, or if you're an LPC, you have never seen before, but the content's the same. Freud is Freud is Freud. Oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital will never change, no matter what tests you take. Psychologists, drug and alcohol counselors, LPCs, NHC, NCHMCEs, everybody takes the same kind of content. So that's why, that's why we are so unique. We really can teach you and provide information with, to you that you might not have seen in your social work or NCE or any of those kind of study guides. Now, the truth is we shouldn't have a job. That's a fact. There, we, I should not have a business. The truth is you should have really been prepared by your college. When you were going through college and starting your master's program, somebody should have said to you, these things are going to be on the exam. These are things that you should study for. As a college professor, I really make sure when I'm teaching something from the basic level to higher level that I say to my, my students, this is important. This is important. So those of you who are mad, mad at the exam, you hate, you think the, the board is out to get you, the evil people are out to get you. It's not the board. The people that write the exams are you in the future. The anger belongs to your college. You spent thousands of dollars and somebody should have prepared you for the exam. So I want you and I implore you, after you pass the exam, go back to your school and call them on it. If I'm doing a medical degree, if I'm doing a the bar, if I am doing a nursing school, most colleges will publish their passing rates. They will. What, does, what good does it do to spend all this time in school and you didn't teach me to pass the exam? So I get that you're angry. I get that many times you're mad and you've taken the test a thousand times and you think someone's out to get you and they're trying to take your money. It's not the board that you should be angry with. It's your school. Okay, I say that to say, um, as we go forward, once you pass this exam, go back to your school. Don't let anyone else have to be in the same position that you were because your school didn't prepare you for the exam. So let's talk about a specific question today. And I really like these short videos because I can really talk about specific uh, questions and how to answer those questions. I think I've said to you a thousand times, it's a reading test, right? If you haven't watched my videos, I'm going to remind you, it's a reading test. You have to know some content, definitely. But a lot of my students, my, my clients are so aware of content. But when they get to the test question, if they don't see the theorist's name, if they don't see it exactly the way they've studied it, they're lost. So let's do a couple of questions and let's really look at how we answer the questions and the technique that we choose. The technique that our company and we, and my, my, all of my coaches think is, prove it to me. Prove it to me. What original questions prove that this is the right answer? No thinking, right? Sometimes some recall, but this is not a thinking test. It's really a recall test or an application test. There's not one test question that says, according to you and your agency. So what you do every day will not work on this test. Now, I can tell you, though, you do the theories every day. Narrative therapy, right? Changing someone's story, reauthoring, reconstructing their story. Uh, CBT, right? CBT says you got some slank and thanking. So CBT talks about changing your thoughts. Because if I change your thoughts, I'll change your beliefs, and I'll change the way that you behave. 
you might see the term Socratic thinking. Socrates, the Greek, or the Greece, the Greek god, the thinker, is what uh, CBT is based on. I'm going to challenge your thought process. Beck said that depression isn't real. You just got spanking, thinking. Okay, so let's look at a question. I'm going to pull up a question really based on uh, the DSM. All right. Okay. You're not expected, no tests, ex or you're expected to be excellent uh, diagnosticians. You do have to learn differential diagnosis, and that means I've got two diagnoses, and they look really similar, and how do I differentiate the difference? So example would be between like OCD and conduct disorder. Conduct disorder really talks about making sure that it is 6 to 16, and my conduct disorders definitely have a, a history of breaking the law okay um, as they grow up if they it's if it's not treated if it's still um it's if it's not oh sorry if it's not treated it can definitely turn into antisocial antisocial people are not a social antisocials are anti-society rules so a conduct disorder when he's 6 to 16 he has no remorse he kills birds, he kills uh, dogs, or he cats, sets the cat's towel on fire, um, and he thinks it's funny, and he doesn't feel any different. Uh, most of us, as parents, we teach our children in, in very young to feel empathy, right? Don't do that to the dog. It hurts the dog. But in conduct disorders, that's a concept they've never learned, and they have no empathy. They will, they will take the next kid's lunch money, take all of his money, and beat him up and laugh at him and have no remorse. Now, the kid who's got that uh, oppositional defiant disorder, that's at size of five. Yeah, he's mean too. He's mean. He's a mean kid. However, he is not trying to really purposely hurt somebody. His goal is he wants what he wants and he wants to, he doesn't want to follow your rules. He's going to be rude to the teacher, rude to the parents, rude to everybody. But the difference is he's not trying to purposely hurt anybody. My OCD, I'm sorry, my oppositional defiant kids actually feel remorse. My conduct disorders, my conduct disorders don't. So that's what I talk about, making sure that you understand the, the differential diagnosis. Those couple of words make a difference. Okay, so let's look at a question, guys. Okay, I'm going to have got my paper in front of me, so i got to make sure I read it because I'm old, too. A college student has been in counseling for several years. She reports having difficulty falling asleep and nightmares related to the rape of her sister that she uh, witnessed four months ago on the college campus. She now misses class and after-school activities. She says that she feels angry, Disconnected from, I'm sorry, she says that she feels angry, disconnected from others, and has gaps in her memories when she talks about the rape, the rape of her sister. Which of the following diagnoses describes the client? So before I list the diagnosis, remember I'm always going to teach you stay in the question. It's a reading test. So she didn't get raped, did she? The question says she witnessed the rape of her sister. Did you know that post-traumatic stress, acute stress disorder, it didn't have to actually happen to me? What we know is little kids. So if, if I if I grow up a home where there's incest and, and daddy or a stranger sneaks into the room every day and he, he lays on my sister's bed, that I'm still traumatized. So post-traumatic stress didn't always have to happen to me. I'm traumatized by the event. We know that people in the military Maybe I survived, but I watched my friend step on a landmine and his legs and his arms got blown off. So be really clear that post-traumatic stress, it didn't happen to me. It didn't have to happen to me, but I was definitely affected by it. So I'm going to go back to the question. As I always say, it's a reading test. So make sure you understand the question before you do anything. So she's a college student and she's been counseling with me for a couple of weeks. So we probably established some rapport. And she reports having difficulty falling asleep and nightmares related to the rape of her sister. She feels angry, 
disconnected from others and has gaps in her memory around the rape of her sister. Okay, that's the content that I know. I understand the content. Now I'm going to look at my four choices. Is the, the question asked, which is the best diagnosis? Okay, anxiety disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, adjustment disorder, or nightmare disorder. So if you want to take a few minutes to figure this out on your own, be sure that you pause the video now and come back and look at the answers later. So as we go along, I know that anxiety disorder, it doesn't say GAD, but realize that when it says that, it means GAD, generalized anxiety disorder. That's a diagnosis. Six months, free-floating anxiety. 